Everyone, we have made it to the end of our tier list of almost 100 brands. This is the last episode, so at the end of this, we're going to have every single semi-relevant brand ranked on this tier list. It has been a long process, but we have finally, finally made it. And for a reminder, we are just looking at the most recent collection available for, for all these brands. So it's almost more of like a, a power ranking than anything. So don't be too offended if I put one of your favorites kind of lower. It was maybe just a weaker collection. Anyway, let's finish off this list. Let's roll. All right, so here is our list. We have Celine and Rick Owens up in the S tier. They're still our only S tiers. The A is a bit heavier. B is where you really start filling out. C tier. Then you get into the Marshalls clearance where... Yeah, you really don't want to be wearing that unless it's like 90% off. And finally, the Forbidden Dungeon, the stuff that's just so offensive. Either the clothes are offensive or the designers are offensive in the case of Dolce & Gabbana and Alexander Wang, that they just belong in the Forbidden Dungeon. Anyway, we only have a few brands left to look at here. And the first one to start us off today is Martine Rose. If I remember correctly, Martine has been working with uh, Demna at Balenciaga for some time or or did. And you can see the through line from some of the Balenciaga stuff into her stuff. Uh, I've never fully gotten into her namesake brand, but let's see what happens here. OK, so we already have a fall 2023 collection split off into menswear, and it does look to be all men here. So let's see what we've got. Look one. Uh, starting off with a bang, I don't know about this color combo, the white, the red, the light brown, the dark brown, the black, the pinstripe. It's uh, almost in like a Dries Van Noten kind of way, kind of mixing things that shouldn't be mixed. And I'm assuming that's intentional and part of the aesthetic, but talking about them as separates, it's a very nice vest. I really like the style. This pattern tie doesn't really do it for me. The undershirt, it's just a, you know, corporate undershirt. The pants, interesting. I like them. I do like the cut. There's this interesting kind of like a Rick Owens dark shadow kind of strap coming down, which I'm curious about. And finally, these shoes, uh, nice square toe shoes with this gold chain over and some sort of interesting, maybe like, coated canvas. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not super upset about it, I would say, but it wasn't like blowing me away. Hmm. Nice shoulders here. It looks like a really nice fabrication. I don't love the cut of this. I would maybe like it to widen out a bit more actually, but the tassels that are the, the fringe at the wrists is very interesting, turning this classic kind of, I don't know, collegiate Northeastern kind of overcoat into something Western is incredibly interesting. I'm just not a fan of this pattern that we had in the tie in the last look. And the pants are a whole other kind of vibe. I don't know what to say about those. I, I mean, I guess it's all about the jacket in this one. And now this is really starting to look like uh, like 2018-ish Balenciaga era. That, I think it was spring 2018, felt very much like this. I don't love the fit of this shirt. And then with these like very low-rise pants is a weird combo. It's, it's off-putting, and I have to assume that that's part of the intent to it. And then some very standard shoes. The orange tag makes it look like Heron Preston, which I'm not sure is exactly what you want. We got some women's wear. Okay, a different version of this coat, but now without the fringe, it's far less interesting. And we're getting, it looks like, repeated pieces from that shirt, these jeans. Okay, very 80s, but there's no, is this collarless? That's very odd. Weird fit. Um, I like this kind of Lurex turtleneck underneath with some interesting... Okay, that's a necklace, a very long necklace. Okay, got it, got it. I do actually like the matchy-matchiness of the shoes in this one. I like what it's going for. I do. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a vibe. This reminds me of now some Raph Simmons stuff. 
uh, he would do these like boat neck sweaters that were super oversized with the super long sleeves. But I think this sweater is sick. I'm very curious how she's achieving this effect here of it lifting off the shoulders. Some sort of like dog tag type of thing. The rise in the pants for some of these just doesn't feel right though. Ooh, damn, it's super Demna, right? And it makes you wonder how much of that stuff is coming from Martine. It is women's wear though, so I won't dilly-dally too much on that. Okay, we're getting into the leathers. This is very nice. The, the kind of like white piping over here, and it's got almost like a bomber type of collar. Yeah, that's very cool. Kind of like a vetmoy ironic t-shirt underneath. It's kind of whatever. Really interesting jeans, too. I'm really curious about that weave. Oh, and this super long belt coming down with this almost like wood grain effect. That's a very strong look, actually. The entire effect is really good. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's, that's a grail right there. Also something that Balenciaga is semi-famous for, I would say. They're kind of like shearling aviator jackets but it's done very nicely here i like this stacked bit down at the uh, at the hem i like the size and i like this pattern more than i like the red one some very nice cargo pants too these read is almost like rick owensy and really interesting and this is kind of like the balenciaga like steroid boot or something this is a very good look as well hmm this is also Super Balenciaga. They did this, I think, maybe 2020 uh, was when they had this style in their collection. And now we're getting the pants, the leather pants. Ooh, that what was a leather jacket in leather pants. I don't know if I like the mix, but I like some of the pieces as separates. This guy. Yeah, these lapels are crazy interesting. I hate, hate this. And then we've got kind of the same. Oh, no, no. We've got some distressing here. Very weird placement for the distressing down at the kind of um, shin area. You like never see that. There's got to be some intentionality there as well. This is really nice. And this color, this cut, I like that quite a bit. And now the rise of the pants makes a bit more sense. The proportions are better in this one, I think. I think we'll probably be calling it soon because we're starting to get a lot of repetition. We've got this sweater in a vest now. Yeah, it's growing on me. I'm starting to see it all come together in my mind. This looks fantastic. And I find this shirt very intriguing. And adding this like acid yellow with this very like Y2K type of belt. Each piece works together surprisingly well in that one. I'm getting the vest again. Fringe track jacket. If that was on there before, I didn't catch it. That's really cool. And then I'm guessing these are more Nike collabs. Yeah. Ooh, what's that made out of? Some sort of like alpaca mohair type of thing. All right, let's, well, let's call it there. Very cool collection. All right, Martine Rose. That one really grew on me. I was not sure about it at first, but then slowly all of the pieces started to kind of reveal themselves and start playing nice with each other. So it's definitely not clearance. It's out of the C tier as well. So I think we're solidly at least somewhere in the B tier. And I would have to say we're actually pretty high up. I don't think it's A. It wasn't quite cohesive enough for me to make it into the A tier. But I think it's like right in this tier between Doublet and Kiko. Very upper B tier. So... I'm pleasantly surprised there, and I'm going to have to make a, a note to myself to pay better attention to Martine in the future. And next up, what do we got on this final tour of all these brands? Misbehave, kind of like a, a Eastern European ravey brand, but some really interesting stuff as well. If you're into the kind of like Balenciaga-ish ravey type of stuff, I feel like there's a lot to like here. But uh, let's see what they've been doing with it recently. So the most recent collection we have on Vogue is 2019. So we're going to have to look elsewhere. Let's hit their website here. They got a sale going. Maybe I'll check that out if, uh, if we like what we see. Seasons. And the most recent is Autumn Winter 22. So they haven't actually... 
that would mean that they've missed two seasons now. So they didn't do spring, and they haven't done fall 23, at least not yet. So it's been a little bit, and it just blows out to a lookbook, I guess. Interesting. I would have hoped for more, but we'll deal with it. I People ask me about my opinions on misbehave somewhat regularly, and what I regularly say is that I like a lot of it quite a bit, but I hate their monogram stuff. And they've started off right off the bat with their monogram stuff. We have some sort of like polo knit sweater type of thing, polo collar, and it's just bad. I guess putting it in this kind of like houndstoothy thing makes it a little bit more palatable, but I still don't like it by any means. And some jeans that you really can't tell what's going on, some sort of light wash. Okay, very cropped or pulled up kind of sporty track thing with the logo. Again, doesn't do anything for me. And these pants, I like, I own these pants, but they're by Balenciaga. I've seen these pants before, you know what I mean? And the shoes are cool. I like the chunkiness. I'll take that. Nice hat, kind of a, a heritage Eastern European type of hat. And some sort of leather or faux leather pants. And then these big chonkers once again. Cool. Okay, this is easily the most interesting piece we've seen so far. I really like the effect here. It's some sort of like cracked painted effect. It looks like a a bathroom wall at CBGB's or something. You know what I mean? It's hard to get a, a good read on it, but it's definitely more interesting than anything else. This is more of like a portrait, but we've got some sort of distressed bomber here. I like all these fringed edges. It kind of reminds me of like the Rick Owens Swamp God stuff that that they did. Oh, this is an Alpha Industries collab. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I really like the effect of that. This tattered nylon is very cool. We get some eyewear. Everyone's got to have an eyewear vertical, uh, some handbags. The bag is eh. And then it's just like a, a tailored jacket. Okay. Branding in the buttons. Always nice to see. And then this is, I think, the exact same look. No shoes. And that's what we get. So it's kind of like a little bit of a a tease, you know? Not a collection. But we've got to rank what we see, right? So for misbehave here, I would say the the brevity of that hurt it. Uh, It could have been a fantastic collection, but I just don't know because it wasn't there. There were things that intrigued me that I would like to see more of. I didn't see enough design, you know, just because there weren't enough looks, but there were interesting pieces. Like, if that had more pieces, I could see it somewhere in the B tier. But lacking that, it's a C. So I'm going to put it, mm, it's upper C for sure. Like, I think I liked it more than Alix, maybe less than Marnie, though because at least they had more to show. So it's it's getting there. It's somewhere between B and C, but they definitely have pieces that are better than that. They can be better than what they showed there. But let's move on. Oh, this is actually going to be interesting because I often confuse these two brands in my head. So we just looked at Misbehave, but now we've got to look at GMBH. I really like a lot of the GMBH stuff I've seen. So Let's see what they've got up their sleeves these days. And GMBH, they do actually do runway shows, thankfully. So we have a spring 23. They haven't done fall yet. But let's see what we've got here. Our first look is a menswear piece. Very silky, very flowy. The no shirt underneath the blazer is like fully in right now. I like that little logo tag. That's pretty cool. Five toe like Vibram type of thing. It, it's starting not with a bang, I would say, but it, it didn't offend me. I don't know what to make of that. That's just like throwing some clothes on that you had in the closet, you know? All right, now we're getting a little bit more interesting. Uh, the shirt, oh, I did. the little roses, very cool. I was going to say it's a boring shirt, but that makes it much more interesting. The pants, I don't care for the pattern. Uh, I like the visible zipper a lot. I think that's a really good choice. And 
the shoes, I don't know if I like them, but I like that they're doing something interesting with the footwear at least. That same, now it's in like a, a poncho v-neck thing. Doesn't really do it for me. These giant, what are these? Like scuba material boots it looks like are wild. All right, similar thing. We don't have the roses this time. It's more like silver snaps. Uh, I do like the cut of it, the fit. Nice and flowy, nice and breathable, a little bit sheer. And then these short shorts, the pattern I'll just leave aside for now because I've said my piece. The visible zipper is now dual going down the side. It's kind of, I think, a staple for the brand from what I've seen. And I've always thought it works really well in a classic kind of side zip boot here. Yeah, solid look. This guy, now the shirts are starting to get a little bit patterny. Uh, doing it in a check. I don't know. It feels a little bit department store. And you've got a little apron-y skirt here with these pockets at the front. It's it's fine. It's all fine. I really do like these wraparound zip boots, though. I think that's a very good style, and I've seen them do that in the past as well. Getting into some knits here. Um, the jewelry, it's okay. This pattern, it feels like it, it'll, it feels very Gen Z. It feels like it'll appeal to the, the anime watchers out there. You know what I mean? And we've seen this skirt before. Here's a different take on those shoes. A little bit of repetition in those pieces. It's nothing wrong with that. This is a full like dress pantsuit type of thing. It's whatever. Now we get that same kind of type of design. Love something. I really don't like that shirt. I don't like those pants either. This look is a miss for me. Moving on. I, I've seen them do much more hard edge stuff. And I think I find that more interesting when they're slightly more industrial, slightly more edgy. This they're kind of trying to be light and pretty. And I don't think it works as well as what I've seen in the past. Cool shoes, though. I don't know. I don't think there's really anything to say about this. Get some kind of interesting sandals grabbing the big toe. All right, we got some leather. I don't know if this brain actually does real leather. It may only be faux leather. Uh, it's hard to say from this one, though. It's nothing special, but I like it, and it's, it's well-constructed, I would say. And with these boots, with a little bit of leg showing, it's pretty nice. I could see, like, Tom Brown kind of getting into this look, you know what I mean? And we're getting similar stuff just in different iterations here. Interesting. Oh, these like polyurethane shorts. I'm sure those are incredibly uncomfortable. I can't imagine they're they're comfortable, but uh, they look pretty good in my opinion. Now we're getting full faux fur coats. Bring that in does kind of take it to another level, makes it feel a bit more luxury, a bit more special, you know? You know what? Ending with these was strong. That's a strong choice. Okay. All right. In the end. All right. GMBH. What do we got? It was not my favorite collection from them. I've seen stuff that I like much more, but it was quite good at times and at least interesting. It actually reminded me a lot of the Prada collection, although I think I liked Prada's take on it a bit more. I think they did enough to get out of the C tier, but it's like low. I think I'm going to put it, you know what? I'm going to put it at the bottom of the B tier, and I think that's fair. And I think I'd be interested to see their next show and see if it has a bit more edge because I think that's what I was lacking and only started getting at the very end. All right, next up. I did not plan this, but we're getting all of like the letter brands. We had Misbehave, which is like M-I-S-B-H-V. Then we had GMBH. And now we have OAMC. Like what? Uh, OAMC, it's, it's two people that design for them. Uh, they also design for Jill Sander, I believe. I have not looked at OAMC in forever, so let's check it out. All right, uh, we have Fall 22, so they have also haven't done a collection in a couple seasons. We work with what we've got. Let's see here. Uh, it's a lookbook style, so we should be able to get a good view on everything. Sometimes it's actually a bit tougher in the runway shows because everything's in motion. But what do we have here? Okay, interesting kind of stitch, de like contrast stitch dealing, interesting kind of uh, contrast stitch detailing at the lapel here. 
nice layering. I like this big old neck that comes up. And I actually, I like the color coordination with the wall and the hair and the skin tone. It's actually very smartly done. We've got some gloves, some very nice tailored pants. They fall at just the right place. And I really like these like mint green boots with a chunky sole. And I like this little dash of white coming around the edge. Uh, I like all the pieces of that. It's a strong opening look. Okay, this guy right here, similar coat, just like I think a different color of the stitch. Pretty much everything's identical, uh, but now that we can see, I think these are knit gloves with the logo in there, but everything else is the same. I think it's just a different color combination. This is some sort of bomber here, but who knows what it looks like. A little bit of tailoring, big billowy. I mean, I think it's unbuttoned, so that helps, but... It's a strong look from the side. These gloves are very interesting. I don't know exactly what to make of them. And then I think these are the, the same boots. And the pants, same pants, I think, too. Okay, so this is the neckline, and it gets unbuttoned in a, in a pretty Rick Owens kind of way. We're not getting a lot of variety here, though. Like, these are all variations on the same thing. I like that we get a really good look at the type of fabrication here, a kind of um, denim kind of thing. Ooh, very like boxy military style. Kind of reminds me of some Lava stuff that I've seen. It's very, very clean, very workmanlike. You can kind of see the craftsmanship in it. These big, fuzzy, fuzzy uh, gloves, which I like. And... The cuts on their pants have all been, like, impeccable. I will give them credit there. Okay, kind of like a denim uh, boiler suit type of thing. Seeing it from this side, it doesn't give you a whole lot, though. Same variations on the same pieces. Big old bomber coat. This is like a classic thing they do, this quilting here. They use that in a lot of stuff, and you've got it in this outer bomber here and this kind of like maybe gilet type of thing underneath with this dual zip provides a lot of opportunities for styling which i appreciate uh getting it in the pants though it looks kind of like snowsuity which doesn't really do it for me in this colorway also it starts to feel kind of like stone island-esque which isn't my favorite this is very nice a big kind of fuzzy corduroy with these panels here I really like that, actually. I'm a fan. Their proportions and cuts are really good. You have to give them credit there. Interesting. It's got a little bit of puff to it. You know, I have to say, I haven't loved anything I've seen, but I, it's been keeping my attention. I have been wanting to keep clicking, and I haven't really had the urge to just close up shop on this one. I like this coat the most out of anything that we've seen i like all the cargo pockets i like the size i like the shape uh it kind of reminds me of some hood by air stuff this sweater i don't know if it feels like oamc it feels almost like a marnie jw anderson type of thing but i i don't dislike it interesting that's new that kind of collar all these stitches are so clean it's interesting how much you can add to a piece, but with just some contrast stitching. But yeah, I think we got a poncho. I think we've seen enough to, to judge this. Let's head back to the rankings. All right, OEMC. That was all very clean. Uh, I don't know if I like the aesthetic. It may just be a personal thing, but you can tell there's a lot of uh, intention behind it. They know what they're doing. It's made well. I like the look of the materials. I can't be, I'm not mad about any of it. I think they're doing what they do really well. And interestingly enough, I put Jill Sander way down here because I was not impressed at all. And that was a completely, that was a night and day from the Jill Sander collection. So it's, it made it into the B tier. And I think it's in that same like McQueen space. I think it was actually better than the undercover collection. Maybe not as good as McQueen, though. Yeah, it's right in there. Heliot, Emile. Yeah, it fits. OAMC, B tier. And next up, 
We've got a, a newer brand on the scene, but I feel like they've been popping up everywhere. I kind of, I started saying popping up, but also popping off. I guess they both fit. Post Archive Faction, PAF. Yeah, I don't know what to think about them, but I also haven't really looked in enough, so let's find out what they're up to. All right, I'm not seeing anything on Vogue, so let's go to the website. I don't know if they do collections. Like, should I go into the archive? 5.1. Yeah, there we go. Okay, interesting. This is like the same treatment. I think they just did a collaboration with Off-White where they did this kind of like leafy treatment, and this looks like they're just kind of taking that as well. It's all this cutout. It's very interesting. It's very well thought out, but it looks utterly unwearable to me. And not in the sense like I'd, I don't think it would be uncomfortable. I just think it would defeat the purpose. Like I do believe to some degree in uh, dressing appropriately for whatever you're doing. And I, I can't conceive of the situation in which I would wear this. And I know that's not always the point of fashion, but it is something I think about with this piece, like with all the holes all over it, but it's also kind of heavy-ish, like long sleeve, zip up, big hood. I don't know. I just don't know how well it would, it would work for me. We've got different angles on it. Okay. And we're getting something else here. This is like some sort of coated canvas cotton type of thing. It's almost minimalist, but also kind of like ninja-ish in that Asian fashion kind of way that they do and that Rick Owens does, all that good stuff. The shoes, these look like 80s shoes. They have this sneaker, I think it's called the Fugue sneaker, that looks like identical to that. Okay, this is the same thing, different angle, more of the cutouts. It just, it doesn't work for me, I don't think. Honestly, really boring jacket. Okay, the pants have something going on. A lot of interesting, like, darting. Uh, so I'll give credit where it's due there. There's a shirt by itself. Very interesting. Very um, pleasing to the eye, actually, I think. I'm guessing they, like, laser cut this, if I had to guess. Uh, but again, I don't think I'd want to wear it. Big boy coat. Big boy convertible coat with all these zips that pop out, like a parachute or something. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, it's almost like floral the way it comes out to me. Or I guess you could say it's like a, a Kleenex maybe if you're being less generous. I don't uh, hate the idea though. I feel like they've kind of popularized that convertible puffer bomber style. Them in like a Memento Mori is a really interesting one. I like this. I like the asymmetrical zip on it. I like the curve going around. I like the potential options here. This is probably my favorite wearable piece here. And these same pants, same cut. Uh, you get some kind of like cloggy Merrill kind of boots here. It's fine. This is more of that kind of boring stuff, to be honest with you. Now we're getting into like Montclair territory, that kind of puffy coated nylon type of thing. I don't know. I feel like I would sweat a lot in it, even if it was cold out and that it wouldn't be comfortable, but I could be totally wrong. It just feels kind of like trash baggy to me, but I do like the cut and the crinkly look of it. And I think that's women's wear because that looks like a skirt to me. Oh, is it like, I think it's an entire dress actually, like hoodie dress. That's nice. Oh, and there it is by itself. That feels very Rick Owens to me, like Rick Owens Lilies type of thing. If I wore women's wear, I think I would really like this. It's got a really good shape to it. So again, credit there, but it's not menswear, so we're not really including that. Interesting, interesting. In the green, it kind of betrays a bit too much of the... It's too playful for this very interesting, intricate style. Effective, I mean, it's whatever. The shirt, the pants are okay. Interesting taper. Yeah, I think I don't fully understand. I can't say I understand. And then this gets kind of boring. I get that it's somewhat in vogue, but it's pretty whatever to me. Sporty. But again, all this stuff going on. I guess you could zip them up. I guess it gives you options. That's interesting. The cutouts here on this shirt, I actually like more. They look like they, they're, 
less obtrusive, you know? All right, I think I've seen enough. Yeah, we're getting back to the holy stuff. Yeah, let's call it there. All right, post-archive faction. Uh, that was somewhat in line with what I've seen, just like on Essence and things like that. As separates, when you look at the pieces in isolation, a lot of the time they're actually, they look just more boring than they let on. But when you look close, you can see that there are a lot of choices being made, and you've got to give some credit there. Uh, I think they're on to something. I just think they need to find a little bit more of like an X factor, and that's what they're missing. But I didn't dislike anything, except for, the I guess you could say the things I found boring, I kind of disliked. But there was a spark there. So I think it's C tier. But the question is where. I'm going to put it right in line with like a, a Craig Green. I think those two fit well together. That feels right to me. And moving on, we're getting there, man. Next up, Loewe, one of the most viral fashion brands these days. Let's see what they've cooked up in the latest collection. All right, Loewe, we have fall 2023, hot off the presses. We've got a hand hanging out of here for some reason. That's so weird. It's like a dress. Um, this arm looks smaller than that arm. Like, is it asymmetrical in the sizing? There must be some sort of concept to it, but it's going kind of over my head a bit. Super weird shape on the shoes, too. That's just kind of a bog standard overcoat. Oh, you know what? This like roundedness to the, the closure here. It may just be the perspective, but that's kind of interesting. We've got some wings. Uh, they almost look metal. I can't imagine how that's comfortable. Like, is there some sort of rig under around the chest? Uh, but it doesn't seem like it's putting too much weight on the shirt. But then the shirt is a bog standard long sleeve, and there are like no pants at all, and some very standard boots. Weird. It's very spare. Like they're each only wearing like one piece, plus some footwear. See here, you got uh, shorts. They look like very nice shorts, like satiny, silky. I'm sure very comfortable. Short shorts apparently still fully in vogue right now. So that's something. What is this? There's no way. That looks like copper. Like that looks like real copper. And it looks like stiff like copper too. But there's no way they made this person wear like a copper coat, right? It's got to be a trompe l'oeil effect. But that's pretty cool. Um, sure, underneath standard same shorts kind of like felted boots now weird collection i like the sort of crinkliness to it again no pants the boots are cool you know what this is not something you see with menswear very much uh it's a very feminine type of thing i've always actually been kind of jealous of women's boots in this style so i, I wouldn't mind trying those out and seeing how they work with a few fits uh here's that same coat and now you can see the shape of that closure in the hem better now it's an it's interest it's a tweak at least it's not completely standard very feminine again in the it's almost sleeveless but just like very like baby doll sleeves the pants maybe suede some weird treatment going on there but i can't fully tell from the pictures what's going on all of the materials i'm sure these are going to work really well in like a showroom situation where people can feel them, see them in person, try them on. I'm sure they'll do very well in that setting, but on a runway setting, it just feels a bit simple. Like this, I'm guessing like some kind of oiled suede or maybe a velour. It looks nice, but it's nothing super special. Now we're getting some repeated pieces. Nice trouser, but very standard in this day and age some lounge pants looks super comfy all this looks so comfy really comfortable to wear i'm sure whoever buys them will be very happy with them but it's, a, it's like kind of elevated basics you know but not because it has weird twists like this this is like a again suede coat i'm guessing i don't know that's weird that's a change very demna i think but a bit more rounded less hard very thick fabrication. I don't know if it really works, though, in this case. It's it's trying something, and I appreciate that, but I don't know if it's fully getting away with it. Uh, repeat there with the wings. 
interesting proportions, like snap buttons here, but the elongated sleeves we've seen a hundred times before. I that, Okay, those are pu puffy, fuzzy. Oh, this is cool. This is may maybe my favorite piece we've seen so far. It's like puffy. I like the proportions. It's fun. Uh, that feels like good Loewe to me. Get in some different colors. Clearly, they like it too if they're repeating it this much. That's cool. More cozy knitwear, satins, all that good stuff. Yep. Some tailoring. Looks like a suede. Oh, or like a felt. And the pants are as well. That's kind of cool. Oh, another one of the, the me metallic metal jackets, whatever this is. Th those are really cool. I'll give them that. But other than that, I think we're getting some repetition here. Feeling kind of standard, a little bit boring, um, just not quite living up to what I'm looking for. But yeah, let's call it there. All right, Loewe. I have seen much better from them. It wasn't bad, but uh, a little bit boring, just not quite living up to the standards I'm looking for. I think it did do enough to make it out of the C tier. Uh, I did find it enjoyable and it looked nice and materials looked really good. It just didn't quite go over the edge for me. So I think I'm going to put it like probably in line with, with Valentino, something like that. I think that's super fair, but Loewe always has the potential to be much better than that. It just wasn't their strongest collection. And now we are going to Japan for Wacko Maria Guilty Parties. Uh, I've never really understood the difference, the delineation between those two names, but I'm guessing they don't have any runway shows on Vogue, so uh, we'll have to find it elsewhere, maybe their website. All right, Wacko Maria website, uh, where do we go? News, may maybe special is where they would put like runway type stuff. Um, we don't want Beats by Dre. Fall, winter 22. Perfect. We've got a lookbook, very like portrait studio. We've got some tailoring. Uh, they're really good at knits. You can see that going on underneath here, like these pattern knits. I feel like I've seen a lot from them. The tailoring is like very, very standard middle of the road though. Interesting like lighting effects. Very striking suit here. Feels like straight out of Yakuza. Like I could be on the streets of Camarocho and Yakuza 3 here and feel right at home. I I'm glad that they're doing some tailoring. That's not usually what I think of from them. It feels, though, like stylish, but not necessarily like fashionable. I think we've got some leather here. Very Japanese style shirt underneath. I don't love this. This seems like a kind of baseball jacket cut. Kind of boring. A little weird. Wonky in the proportions. Bob Marley sweatpants. That's weird. That's very odd. I mean, I've they kind of like the Rasta thing with Wacko Maria. But it kind of reminds me of like a college dorm room. Maybe I'm I'm aging myself here, but back in my day, when me or my friends, whoever would, would go off to college, they would do like these sales at the for the first week or so of the school year, where they would set up shop. You could buy like your necessities for your dorm room and stuff, but they'd also always have these posters. So in like every dorm room, you'd see the same posters from this beginning of the year sale. It would be like Bob Marley, Sublime fish like rage against the machine stuff like that so that, unfortunately that's what i think of when i think of bob marley now uh more bob okay this one very streetwear like palace north face supreme kind of things i don't know it's like and some tailoring again really some really boring tailoring i'm glad that they're doing tailoring though i i commend them for that I think the cheetah is a big thing for them. That's that's a nice wearable piece. I really like this shot, this setup, but the shirt is nothing to write home about. Logo tee, bog standard, logo tees, puffer jackets, pattern shirts. It's kind of like this stuff that I don't know, like like this guy right here. This is like the the well dressed stylish friend in the friend group. Not like the high fashion one, like they're not dressing up in Hyder Ackerman runway pieces, but they're just dressing in, you know, a step above Supreme or something, just elevating themselves a little bit. Kind of like what, what F.A. fucking awesome that brand does. 
knits a really weird skull piece for some reason. Yeah, I just keep coming back to the word, like, stylish. But it's not fashion. It's a weird delineation. It's a fine line between style and fashion, but I do think there's a difference. That's a cool fabrication. But yeah, I don't think they're fully getting over the line, nor do I think they, they really want to. And I think, yeah, suddenly we're at, we're at the end here. Okay. So where do I put that? Like, there's a reason I don't have, like, Supreme and Palace on this list. And that's because I think they're trying something different than these, like, luxury brands that we mostly have here. Uh, whereas this falls, I think, slightly more on a different end of the spectrum. But we put it on the list. We've got to rate it. I think, was it clearance level? I think so. Because I didn't see a lot of opportunities. To make it into C and above, you have to at least show that you're working towards something higher, that you have higher conceptual and fashionable aspirations. And I don't think this brand does, and that's not their fault. It's not what the brand is about, but the thing is they're uh, they're at a certain price point. They're sold in these same boutiques as these other brands, so they're going to be judged against them to a degree. Now, that being said, I didn't hate it. I think it's m towards the top of clearance, like... Let's put it between Stone Island and D-squared there. That feels about right to me. But now we're taking a swing to the total other end of the direction to high luxury because now we're going to talk about Versace. I've gone on record saying that Versace is just not my vibe. They are the type of luxury that I normally just do not gravitate towards whatsoever. So let's see if that is still true. All right, we've got a lot of options here. Atelier Versace, Fendi by Versace, Versace, Versace by Fendi. Why are they both there? Versus, versus by J.W. Anderson. I forgot that happened. Um, I'm guessing we just want regular old Versace. Spring 23. They haven't done fall apparently yet, but that's fine. We can look at spring. A very loud piece to start off with here. Okay. So it's some kind of like maybe polyurethane, coated polyurethane, very loud, graffiti-esque python print. Very tacky, I would say. Um, kind of like a skin-tight tank underneath with the logo. Kind of cool belt. And then the pants come out of nowhere. Like, the pants feel like Martine Rose or something to me. Weird. Weird look. And now we get a slightly more cohesive piece where you get that pattern in a full suit. Like, wallet chain... But it still comes through in the shoes, and they're still not great. I don't know why he's holding, like, this vase goblet thing. I also don't know why he has this cream tank underneath. It's just tacky is the word that, that keeps coming back to me. Now it's sleeveless for some reason, and now the python is in the pants. Uh, a big parka, like military parka, that doesn't totally fit in uh, conceptually or tonally. This suit is in a different fabrication now. It's more like a large weave. I'd be curious to know what it's made out of. But we're getting a lot of like mix and match of similar pieces like that tank top underneath. There's a different iteration of it there, a slightly shorter version of the parka, but it's all still the same type of thing generally. All right, we're starting to switch it up a bit, bringing in some pinks. Uh very flowy pants with some like straps maybe at the bottom this whole look has an interesting movement to it at least i'll give them that this is like uh, some sort of raincoat material oh i don't like the fit of those pants at all like a pink trench classic with the shoulder flaps nice lining in there they're like wearing plates and stuff it's so weird you know what i don't hate this. It's just like a nice pink cardigan. I love a nice pink cardigan. I have a pink cardigan, and I, I really like it. So you get some points from me there, at least. Okay, overcoat, kind of like mesh knit. Is that their logo, the, like, Greca logo? Oh, no. The logo jeans. I thought those were gone. I thought we banished those. A uh, nice little... Knit, cool pattern on the knit. A suit, zoot suit riot. It's not a zoot suit. Uh, the fluo, 
fluo green, uh, very classic luxury color, about as classic as it gets in the modern era. We're, you know what? I, I didn't mention this, but it's interesting that we're layering blazers. You've got a standard like uh, two button blazer on top of a double breasted blazer. That's very weird. That's not something you see every day. Overcoat, same pants, same sandals. It's weird how much repetition we're getting. That's a hideous shirt. Abomination. It looks like replica. It looks like the type of stuff you get on a New York street corner. You know what I mean? It's also just like off-putting, the faces they're making. Hello. Nice to see you. Not nice to see you. It's not good. It's not any better in green. Is this like swimwear? Is this the tank top they've been wearing the entire time? I think it is because the beige ones had the cutouts too. That's really not good looking. Whoa. Fingies. He's got gold fingies. Blue suit. The pants are really bad. I hate the tailoring on these pants. Yeah, I think I'm done. Oh my God. That's the look we got to close on. I think there's only one person who is going to buy this suit and their name may or may not be DJ Khaled. Like, I think that's that's the clientele they're going for with this suit. And that's not my clientele, and I doubt it's yours either. So let, let's call it there. All right, so the question with Versace. Is it Forbidden Dungeon? Because I did put, like, Burberry in here because I just found it so offensive in a, in a style way that, I had to stick it there. But I don't think Versace belongs in the dungeon because they're just doing what they do. It's what they've been doing for many, many years now. So it doesn't surprise me that it was what it was. So for that reason, just because they're living up to their own standards, I guess, it's not in the dungeon. But it's definitely in clearance, okay? We're going to put that... You know, there's more uh, effort and intention to it than like the Givenchy collection. So I'm going to put it like, and even more than hair impressed into, that was rough. I'm going to put it like right there and it's in clearance. And with that, you may be seeing this here. Some of them got counted twice for some reason. We've already done Martine Rose. We've already done Saint Laurent. So that leaves one designer to rank here. And that is Yoji Yamamoto. It's the final Yoji Okay. After that musical interlude, look one. So we're mixing and mashing. Yoji is so good at these big, baggy, layered outerwear pieces and things like that. Um, this treatment is not my favorite of his. But I can appreciate it. I like the way it flows into the pant as well. There's a nice movement there. Um, this blazer underneath doesn't fit quite as well. But uh, it's cool. And the shoes are their boots of some kind. This is cool. What is this made out of? Is it the same thing? It looks like slightly grittier almost. And you're starting to get some different like blue grays in there. It's cool. I really like the way he's playing with colors and patterns here. I do appreciate that. Here, not so much. I'm, I may not like that the color palette so much on this one. That's kind of nice, I guess. Underneath, not so much. Really nice uh, cut on those pants with that wraparound and the kind of flare out underneath. And these look like they're a Doc Martin collaboration, but apparently. Uh, oh, okay. I like the splotchiness of it. It kind of looks like if somebody wore Etro and then got into a gunfight. You know what I mean? Very, like, classic styling on the shoes. Interesting. Kind of more of the same. I, they're just too heavily patterned for me, unfortunately. Uh, cool. It's like a blanket, essentially, here for that coat. It's unfortunate because I think with a, a different type of treatment... These would be hitting me much differently. Well, hello, sir. What year are you from? Yoji loves old-timey hats, man. Loves them. 
I really like the classic types of fabrication that he's playing with here as well. You can tell there is um, a history to it almost. And it's interesting. It looks like these are lined on the inside The way, when the, the flaps come out. That's an interesting choice. A lot of grungy fringe coming down here as these pinstripes turn into just black. That's a nice effect. Okay, a more standard black overcoat bondage style. Cool. This is maybe my favorite one so far of this bunch. Okay, we're getting kind of classic here. Heavy bondage styles. Classic, like, parachute harem pants. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Whoa, that's wild. I like this chain. I really like the, like, arm band cuff things. Very cool. Yoji Yamamoto, great jewelry. Super underrated silver jewelry. I will say that much. Uh, I don't like the coat, though. I, like, don't... I don't like it. I just don't. The palette is bothering me. And I get that's a personal thing. And that's not going to apply to everyone, but... It just hits my eye in the wrong way. And I think I just need to get past it because I can't look past it. So I'm hoping we switch gears here. Okay, we get a better look at these pants. I love it. That's a that's a great effect right there. Interesting, interesting. We've got like a classic cotton kind of style, like canvas, and a really cool, almost like growing. It looks natural, like a plant. At the neckline. Look at those boots. Kind of like those low wavy ones, huh? All right. A nice kind of drape to this going around. These are much stronger, I think. Classic Yoji types of looks. Yep. I like the I like the neck flap. Interesting. Some more like classical tailoring. All right. It's fine. A little two tony thing. Sure. Sure. More like billowing pants. This is a good look. Like, just from afar, I really like how everything's working together here. A nice kind of layered blazer with a vest underneath. This nice open, like, upturned collar shirt. And then really nice, like, drop crotch pants with a kind of curve to them. Very nice. There we go. A little bit more casual. Kind of like a field jacket kind of thing. cargo e pants. Oh, some cutout stuff. All right. I like the back half of this much more. Yeah, these are all really nice. Oh, cool geometry to it. I like the visible stitching. I like this upturned detailing on the button closure. Very cool. And it's starting to deconstruct. Yeah, dude, this is what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? Oh, hell yeah. And it's exploding. It's growing. Yes, and the last look, boom. He's just sprouting things all over the place. He's got these suspenders. Whoa, wild. And I'm assuming the last one is Yoji. In the end, I wish we'd gotten more of that throughout the collection. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, it started off just so rough in the color palette and the pattern choices and the design choices. But then it suddenly took a turn, and we were in this really interesting place where I was having a lot of fun. Uh, the first half of that collection was, like, low C tier, but then the back half of it was A tier. I thought that was fantastic. So where does that leave us? It leaves us somewhere in the Bs. And I think I'm going to put that, like, right around the RAF Vetma space in the B tier, right in the mid B tier. But as you can see, Yoji Yamamoto, when he's feeling on his game, he can break up to the top tiers any damn time he wants. And with that, our list is complete. Almost 100 brands. I think it's like 98 or something like that. Shall we do the honors? In our lowest tier, in the Forbidden Dungeon, we have Alexandra Wang, Dolce and Gabbana, Pierre Moss, and Burberry. They are the worst of the worst. In the clearance rack, still very, very rough. Just not much value here at all. ERL, Missoni, Hyder Ackerman, Bape, Selma McCartney, Montclair, Courage, Armani, Reese Cooper, Boris Bijan Sabiri, Moschino, Acne, Jacques Mou, Morant, Loverboy, Mark Jacobs, 
Louis Vuitton, Givenchy, Heron Preston, Versace, Lanvin, Ambush, Amiri, Jill Sanders, Stone Island, Waco Maria, and D Squared. In the C tier, so this was a tier where you're starting to see sparks of creativity, of intention, of fashion. You've got Off-White, Casablanca, Bode, Marine Serre, A Cold Wall, Hood by Air, Tom Ford, Craig Green, Post Archive Faction, Fendi, Rude, Helmet Lang, Dries, GCDS, Balma, Sune, Fear of God, C2H4, Alix, Misbehave, Marnie, Issy Miyake, and Wales Bonner. And in the B tier, this is where you start getting people who are doing uh, what they do very, very well and respectably. You've got GMBH, Comme des Garçons, Gucci, Valentino, Loewe, Saint Laurent, Hermes, Bottega, The Row, Dior, Palm Angels, Undercover, OAMC, McQueen, uh, Helia Emile, Margella, JPG, Vetmont, Yoji, Raph, Demulemeister, uh, 99% is the soloist, Westwood, Sakai, Kenzo, Prada, Doublet, Martin Rose, Kiko, Y Project, and JW Anderson. In the A tier, so now in my mind, now that we've seen how hard it is to break in, this is really getting into like the, some of the best at what they do. We actually have Diesel, Jun J, Greg Lauren, Tom Brown, Enfant Rouge de Prime, and Balenciaga. And finally, the S tier, just who I thought, at least from these single collections, were the best of the best, the best of what fashion had to offer. We had Rick Owens and Celine. So that's our list. I, I think when I started, I did not realize what a massive undertaking this was going to be. It was a process getting here. Thank you so much for going through it with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, while you're here, take a look at the other video on screen. Subscribe to the channel. I'm sure we'll be doing things like this again. Uh, and I'll see you next time.